Alright guys, it's been a while, apologies for that. Uh, busy doing all kinds of things not related to bike, it would be fair to say. Energies are otherwise diverted. Um, I've started making things recently, all kinds of things from planters for garden to instruments and furniture and artwork. Anyway, I saw Pete's uh, video the other day, he's extending his Ryobi battery packs and a while ago I took some of these cells I'd got and turned them into a pack so just thought I'd show my latest incarnation. Got a Ryobi cordless saw, just a little rip, rip saw. It's proving very, very effective to be fair. I'm, I'm asking a lot of it. Cutting some 18mm chipboard, uh, no it's not chipboard, it's blockboard. Uh, hardwood block board as well from a 1980s Wurlitzer um, jukebox this. This is going to be a side panel for one of my instruments I make. Um, so this is my saw and as, as I was saying it's uh, hey, oh, cat's diving about. Two of them, no fighting now. There he goes. Oh, I've got them in there like this. Just some Anderson connectors just jagged onto the uh, onto the pins that connect up with the cordless pipe. So sounds convincing enough. So here's the pack I made, or one of them rather. This is the one I use the most. It's literally a cardboard box. That's my balance lead. I've got a pair of Anderson connectors that just stuck up on the other end. This is speaker cable because I didn't have anything else and it still gets warm. This is little 15 amp cable. This gets quite warm if I give it some hammer. And if I'm ripping an 8 before up or something. Well you can see in there there's really nothing special. It's, uh, I mean I've literally soldered them together as per videos and, and put my little voltmeter on top here. Labelled it up just so I know what's happening. I just put it in the cardboard to stop it getting nicked or dinked. You know, I didn't want it getting bashed by other tools and stuff, but yeah, there it is, it works great. I'm getting about six and a half, seven amp hours out of it easily before it drops to 18 volts. I've never took it below 18 volts. Uh, I've not had the need to. Um, I mean, I take this to the builder's yard and rip pallets with it. And I was there two and a half hours the other day. I mean, I could, I'll spin the camera around and show you perhaps in a bit, but I filled my van with cut pallet timber and the battery never let go once. So just as an extension of that, this is my next idea. I'm going to have it in this little flight case box. I'm going to lay my batteries out in here and I'm going to have my voltmeter at the top with some outputs, two little terminals and I think what I'm going to do is set the whole thing inside. It all fell over so I'll just stand them all up but that is the amount of cells that will be in there it is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 parallel 5 series. In this bit here there will be a small piece of timber and there will be a face there. There will be like a, a blanking panel with a voltmeter sat on it. This will be sat in there along with two terminals here as an output. So I can just chunk plug in there and then I'm good. Um, I wanted increased capacity and I wanted something in a more robust case so I could chuck it around a little bit and take it with me. So that's going to work a treat. Seal it up when I'm not using it, keep the dust out and uh, I can chuck it around a little bit. And just to give you an idea, these are the kind of things I've been making. Uh, this is just, uh, this is made out of pallet wood, it's just a tote box. Uh, we're knocking these up in garden along with some other things, some nice block boards. I've got one here I'm just about to finish sanding. Uh, just sealed this side up with some grain filler. And I'm going to give this another sand down and then give it some, uh, some of my special loose finish. Which uh, you should all know about. Just go on the internet and find out loads of different mixtures for finishing wood. Never use a paintbrush with varnish, that's what I've learned over the last couple of days. So. I'm literally just ripping this to get it something light so I can start taking some measurements off it. I'm probably out of camera there. Let me just uh, show you that. Have you seen one of these before? This is for uh, helping you to cut things straight with your, with your circular saw. It's like a little jig. It runs off of this side. 
don't know if you can see that but it's fantastic if you've got something you want to cut you take a little piece of timber and you want to rip that off you've got a straight edge here you marry it there if that's your line and you just cut straight across bang square every time never never let me down that it's been brilliant you can make them just out of waste wood simple tight bond great wood glue great wood glue though it is full of evo stick at the minute which i'm experimenting with the old evo stick glue so let's get this thing on here and try and get it cut i'll just make sure you can see that edge you can sweet i'm coming down here it's not important where i go i just want to square it off have you seen one of these before this is another g built this myself too you know you can pay five six hundred pounds for uh, saw circular saws that sit on a fence uh, track saws I think they call them big money big money and uh, really the principle is extremely simple and uh, this is it this is the principle I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the interest of making it a proper one I'm just going to line off the cut I've just done because it'd be nice if it was something like as a starting point Good enough to get me going. I don't have to be too accurate because all these are going to get resourced later. I'm just sizing this panel because it's like I say, it's come off a wheel. It's a jukebox, it's part of the frame, it's not part of the front and sides. They went off to uh, a little art installation. This is just the casings. So uh, here we go, I'll stick this on here. We've got about 19.6 we're showing at the minute. No, uh, no hands either on the jig. I'll show you why in a minute. See you in a moment. Easy peasy. So, uh, there you go, that little saw, little Ryobi saw. Man, I mean, I've got a great big Makita 110 one and uh, it never comes out now. This this just gets used all the time. So, uh, maybe I'll move you and show you that edge. I mean, that's super straight. That's a super straight cut. All the way along. Nice. Just off of my jig. And the reason I don't need to use any hands with the jig, and this is a little bit naughty, but I only ever use this for ripping, but the screws I built it with protrude ever so slightly. You see? And they just dig into the work surface just a little bit and just stop it from slipping and sliding around, which is fine for me, because it's all going to get sanded off and re on, as I say. So there you go. That's what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks, making lots of stuff. Um, I have got a website up and running now, Stuart Doughty Makes, uh, it's on Weebly but if you just put Stuart Doughty Makes into um, Google you'll find me, I'm on there. So uh, yeah that's it, I might do another couple of videos of me making a cajon maybe, maybe one of me playing it eh? So uh, that's it for now, I just wanted to show this to Pete. So uh, good luck with your batteries on your tools Pete, it does work man, I'm having a lot of success with this, as you can see it ripped that effortlessly, I'll be working out here all day today, um, i got my things, I've got a little little cajon to build here for my pal's kid for Christmas, uh, I'm going to etch his initials in the back and uh, it's going to sound funky, it's going to look funky, and uh, everyone's going to be smiling, so uh, right well, uh, big hello to all my friends, all the people who I've spoke to recently and not spoke to recently, Raymond, Pete, Mark who's uh, just come on board, Chris, um, yeah, big up to all of you, keep building, keep making, see you in the next one.